are discussing the swing limits of amplifiers and these are crude limits imposed on the signal beyond this the nonlinearity becomes very severe ok. So, the idea is you have to keep the input voltage within these limits and what causes the swing limits in all our amplifiers we want the transistor to remain in saturation the transistor should be on and in saturation. So, one of the limits is imposed by the transistor going into cutoff and the other one is imposed by the transistor uh, going to saturate uh, sorry going out of saturation region into triode region ok. So, for every transistor you can compute two limits like this the limits are usually expressed in terms of the input signal you can also do it in terms of output or if you compute the limits on the input the output limit will be simply the small signal gain times the uh, small signal gain times the input limit ok. So, that that is what we calculated we took the example of a common source amplifier yesterday we will take another example uh, later. This is the circuit for which we calculated the swing limits and we found that V i had to be less than 2 by 11 volts or more than minus 1 volt this being imposed by the triode limit and this from the cutoff limit ok. Of course, it is assumed that V i is varying at a frequency when uh, I mean at which the capacitors do behave like short circuits ok. It is not V i is set to 2 by 11 volts uh, as a DC value ok that the circuit would not work at all because of the blocking capacitors, but uh, it is varying at some frequency ok. It could be a sinusoid it could be any other kind of waveform, but uh, all the frequencies of V i must be more than the cutoff frequencies of this these AC coupling networks ok. Now, uh, the question I was asking when we broke the class yesterday was, so let us say V i is varying in some way it does not matter. So, something like that and it just hits minus 1 volt ok and the current in the transistor just becomes 0 at this point right that is the idea I mean that is the cutoff limit. So, what is the voltage at the drain? what is the voltage at the drain at that instant. Remember the signals are changing at a frequency where the capacitors are short circuits. So, what is the voltage please calculate. There are many ways to calculate it right you can uh, first of all separate out the small signal and the uh, operating point picture calculate the total voltage as uh, the operating point plus increment and calculate it from there ok or there are other ways also please do that. Is the question clear? As the input is swinging at some point when V i reaches minus 1 volt the transistor just cuts off the transistor uh, total drain current becomes equal to 0. What is the drain voltage at that instant? Yesterday you said it is V d d, but I think I showed you at least you should be convinced that it is not going to be V d d because it does not make sense right. If this is V d d the current in this resistor will be 0 but then there will be some incremental voltage here there has to be some current flowing there that will violate Kirchhoff's current law ok. What is the quiescent voltage at the drain? Huh? 4 volts ok. The total drain voltage is always the quiescent drain voltage plus the incremental drain voltage ok the quiescent drain voltage is 4 volts and the incremental drain voltage is how much minus gm rd parallel rl 
times V i okay. and what is the value of V i for which we have to calculate this minus 1 volt okay. and this uh, product is minus 10 times minus 1. So, 4 volts plus 10 volts which is 14 volts. Okay. Now, if you did not have if R L was infinity what would happen? If R L equals infinity I mean this is an open circuit. So, then 0 current here means 0 current there. So, it has to be 24 volts okay. and that is apparent from this formula also if R L was infinity this product would be how much? Yeah, what is that? How much is that? Minus 20 okay, times minus 1. Okay. So, it would be 20 volts of increment. So, it would be 4 volts plus 20 volts equals 24 volts. So, only if this R L is infinity will this reach all the way to V D D. Otherwise, well before it reaches V D D the transistor will be cut off. Okay. In quiescent condition all of the current in R D is going through the transistor. Okay. No current goes here that is the purpose of the DC blocking capacitor. right? The incremental voltage here is 0. Now, as the input swings negative the current here reduces Okay, that will push up the voltage here. As the voltage here increases the current here reduces from its quiescent value whereas, the current in this increases from its quiescent value and this goes on happening as V i swings more and more negative and at some point this current here equals the current there and nothing flows into the transistor. Okay. So, that is the point at which it cuts off. So, you can calculate it very easily using the increments, but you should also have other ways of calculating it. At the point of cut off all of the current is flowing that way. right? What is the voltage across C 2? What is the voltage across C 2? 4 volts. Okay. In quiescent condition it is 4 volts and even with the signal it remains at 4 volts. Okay. The incremental voltage across the capacitor is 0 that is the meaning of it being a short circuit for signal frequencies. right? So, it acts like a 4 volt battery even if you apply signals of the right frequency of course. Okay. So, now you can also easily calculate it from there. So, you have 24 volts 100 kilo ohms a 4 volt battery and 100 kilo ohm. Okay. So, this point is cut off because the transistor is cut off. So, what is the current flowing here? How much is that? Huh? Yeah, it is. Uh, so, you basically have across the two resistors 24 minus 4 volts. Okay. So, the current is 20 volts by 200 kilo ohms or 0 0.1 uh, milliamps. So, the voltage here is 10 volt, the voltage here is 10 volt and the total is 24. So, this voltage would be 14 volts. Okay. So, I mean you have to be able to calculate things in different ways, this is one of the ways. Okay. See, it is very easy to just do the small signal calculations where all capacitors are short circuits and so on, but you have to be able to put everything together the operating point and the small signal pictures. In the total picture, the capacitors will hold constant voltages. Okay. Uh, initially, we said that if we did have floating batteries, the biasing would be very easy. You simply stack floating batteries, floating meaning both terminals accessible and connectable anywhere. You could uh, stack them in series with uh, input or output to get the right operating point plus the input voltage or minus the output voltage and so on. Now, we do not have floating batteries, but large enough capacitors will work as floating batteries. We have discussed that before. right? So, the capacitor will hold a constant of 4 volts and as you can see as this voltage rises, this current starts falling, this current starts rising and eventually uh, this the current in the transistor goes to 0 and all of this current goes there. Okay and you can see why this is the swing limit. After that the transistor simply cannot influence the voltage here. right? It is the transistor's drain current that is changing the voltage here. right? That is what is giving you amplification, but once it has become 0 then V i goes further negative it will remain 0. Okay? So, then 
you can see what happens to uh, if you try to so let us say the input reaches minus 1 volt and the incremental output will reach plus 10 volts okay, at that instant. If you try to increase the input amplitude like that, the output will go that way, but stay at 10 volts. There is no way for it to rise above 10 volts, right? Because there is no extra current that can uh, be provided from the transistor. Okay, so the output will get clipped, right? I mean, those of you who have done experiments with op amps and so on, you do know that there are some limits to uh, the output of the op amp. Okay, eventually all those limits will be can be traced to swing limits of some transistors within the op amp. Okay. The swing limit of every transistor is related to the triode region or the uh, cutoff, uh, I mean the transistor entering the triode region or the cutoff region. Is this okay? Any questions? Okay, let us take another example uh, quickly and move on. Capacitors are large as usual. Okay. What circuit is this? What kind of circuit is this? What is that? I know, but what I mean, it has an input and output. What kind of an amplifier is that? What is that? Voltage? Yeah, what, what circuit is this? We have been discussing these things all along, right? Well, it is a voltage control voltage source or source follower. Okay. So, just find the swing limits in terms of the input voltage V i. Of course, in this case the gain is nearly 1, so it will also be in terms of the output voltage. Okay. As always, you just find the values of V i when the transistor goes to just goes to triode and just goes to cutoff and for cutoff always use the criterion based on the total drain current like I described yesterday, not based on V g s becoming equal to V t. Okay. First of all, do not throw in formula like incremental output as GMRL times V i and so on, right. That is only for a common source amplifier. For every circuit, you will have to calculate what every quantity is, okay. What is the quiescent value of the drain voltage? Huh? 10 volts. Okay. So, as usual, you can use either V d greater than V g minus V t or V d s greater than V g s minus V t. You have to see which is more convenient. In this case, the drain is at a fixed voltage. So, obviously, it is easier to take the drain voltage with respect to ground rather than the drain voltage with respect to source which is varying. Okay. What is the incremental drain voltage? Huh? 0, it is connected to the power supply. What is the quiescent gate voltage? 5 volts. What is the incremental gate voltage? V i, because we have uh, no R s and capacitor the short circuit. What is the incremental, uh, what is the quiescent I d? 200 microamperes, okay. it is biased with a current source, easiest thing to find. What is the incremental I d? This is the only thing that has to be calculated really. right? So, how do you do that? We have V i. So, this is the thing for which I asked you to use the 
expression from our analysis of the source follower. But even if you do not have that, you can calculate it from scratch. So, if you have V i like this, what will be the current? What is the current? We have evaluated this for the source follower, for the voltage control current source and so on. The voltage here is V i times G m R L by 1 plus G m R L. Therefore, the current is that divided by R L, which is V i times G m by 1 plus G m R L. Okay. Now, the triode region limit says that the total drain voltage must be greater than or equal to the total gate voltage minus the threshold voltage. Okay. So, it is very easy it says that 10 volt should be greater than or equal to 5 plus V i which is the total gate voltage minus 1 volt which is the threshold voltage. So, the what does this say? V i has to be less than or equal to 6 volts. Okay. Now, if you look at this circuit, what should be the gate voltage when it just enters triode region? The drain is at 10 volt. So, what is the gate voltage when it just enters triode region? Huh? The drain is fixed to 10 volts, right? 11 volts. So, if this goes up to 11 volts, it just enters triode region. So, it has gone from 5 to 11. So, that is an increment of 6 volts, that is all. Okay. So, for the source follower, actually the calculations are very easy. Then, the other uh, limit I d plus I d, which is 200 microamperes plus V i times g m which is 200 micro siemens divided by 1 plus j m r l. How much is j m r l? In this case 15. So, the denominator is 16. Now, some of you may have approximated uh, j m r l to be much more than 1 and neglected it in which case you will get 15 here. Okay, That is ok. This has to be greater than 0. So, this tells you that v i has to be less than sorry v i has to be uh, greater than minus 16 volts. Okay. Now, if you do that, if you make that approximation J m R L much more than 1 and neglect 1, you will get 15 volts here. Okay. That is all. So, V i has to be between 6 volts and minus 16 volts. Okay. So, again what happens is the at least the limit at the output could be calculated very easily. What happens when the transistor is cut off? 200 microampere has to flow into 75 kilo ohms. So, what is the voltage here? What is the voltage there? If 200 microamperes is flowing in that direction, huh? not 15, minus 15. Okay. So, this is minus 15 volts, right. So, at least approximately you should be able to tell me what the swing limits are. What is the gain of the source follower, roughly speaking? 1. Okay, if the output is minus 15 volts, the input also has to be minus 15 volts. So, that is the limit. Now, the gain is not exactly 1, the gain is 15 by 16. So, that is why the limit on the input is 16 minus 16 volts, not minus 15 volts, that is all. But even if you make that approximation and say the input swing limit is minus 15, that would be acceptable. Okay. So, again, what happens is that in the question condition, yes as the signal varies, this signal is changing. right? So, let us say again here the assumption is the signal is varying at some frequency which will make the capacitor as a short circuit okay? or that is why I have shown infinite capacitor without the value. So, as the input changes, the voltage here changes and the voltage here changes in exactly the same way. So, some current will flow here. So, there is a current division between the transistor and this. So, in the quiescent condition all of this 200 microamperes will be flowing there. Okay. Now, as the input voltage becomes smaller, this voltage becomes smaller, this also goes down. Okay. So, some current starts flowing 
in this direction right so the total of uh, this id and whatever is flowing from rl has to be 200 microamperes because that's an ideal current source okay so for a sufficiently large negative value of vi this current equals 200 microamperes and this current becomes zero so that's when the transistor cuts off okay is this fine yes gm is 200 micro siemens yeah that's correct no no see everything changes as the signal value is changing right this is a non linear circuit so as i change the signal the current will change slightly in the transistor that will change its gm and so on okay so that calculation is very hard to do by hand if you take all of that that's like full non linear analysis right when we say when we use the gm value from the operating point what we are doing is what we described long back neglecting all the higher order terms of the taylor series in the non linearity that's what you are asking right i mean you are we are using the gm value from the operating point but the transistor is moving away from the operating point as we apply the signal that is correct as the signal is applied the transistor's current changes and its gm changes it changes continuously okay it's only in quiescent condition that this gm is 200 micro siemens right so but the whole point of using only the first uh, two terms of the taylor series is to assume that the gm is constant okay so imagine i mean essentially what we are doing when we uh, calculated with the increment is that replacing the non linear characteristic by this okay where this is the operating point we are using the tangent at the operating point if you look at the red curve gm is constant if you imagine that that was the mos transistor isn't it because it has a constant slope so now in reality you do need to find the effects of uh, the gm changing constantly as the signal is changing and so on basically you have to do full non linear analysis for that you use a circuit simulator okay i mean that's not something we can do by hand even for the simplest of circuits it's very difficult to do okay so that's why the swing limit gives you a crude limit the whole point is let's say you have some circuit which is distorting too much then you go and increase these crude limits its distortion will reduce okay it's not that you will operate this circuit with a 6 volt input or a minus 16 volt input okay you may i mean you by doing the detailed analysis you may find that this circuit is good only for a 1 volt input that's when the harmonic levels are low enough but let's say you have a circuit that is distorting too much for 1 volts so then you try to increase these limits it may i mean that's the way to reduce the distortion of the circuit okay it's for design any questions and also it sets a sort of hard limit because beyond these limits it becomes severely non linear if you apply a sine wave as the amplitude of the sine wave increases the output will resemble a sine wave but it will be deviating from the sine wave because of harmonic content okay but if you reach the cut off limit for instance the output won't change at all it will clip it's a severe non linearity so that's the limit that we are finding okay any other questions so this sort of completes all the kind of analysis you have to do for a circuit we have the small signal functionality and you also have to specify what is small signal and a crude measure of that is the swing limit okay and you can now appreciate the difference between different circuits hopefully so let's say let's let me take a quick example we had common source amplifiers with various types of uh, biasing so let me take two examples okay this is what kind of biasing is this current mirror we have used the current mirror now instead of using a current mirror i can use a single transistor with a sufficiently large rg and vi okay if i use the same transistors and the same current the gain of the two circuits will be exactly the same it will be minus gm rl and gm is the same for both 
Now, what do you think is the possible difference between these circuits? I mean, in light of what we have recently learned. Huh? What did we recently learn? Not much, but <laughs> swing limits, okay. Is there any possible difference in swing limits between these two circuits? We evaluated the swing limit of the common source amplifier as well, right? You can kind of recall those results. Swing limits? No, no, there is no signal there. That is not the relevant thing, right? I mean, why will M not have any, why will M not impose any swing limit restriction? This RG is so large, no current flows, and then the drain is connected to the gate. So, this will never go into, uh, this will never go into dry out region, right? You just look at the M1 in the two cases and tell me if there can be some possible difference or what. Yeah, what is the difference? I mean, look at the expressions for the common source amplifier swing limits from yesterday. I mean, RG is so large, you can assume it to be open circuit for uh, the signal picture, right? All those things are there. I mean, it is a well designed common source amplifier. Then, what possible differences do we have? Hmm? Yes, Abhigyan, what possible differences are there? So, this is the expression for the swing limit and in this case, you are restricted to V d g being 0. Okay. So, the swing limit here is really V t divided by 1 plus g m r l, it has got nothing to do with the supply voltage and so on. Right. Whereas, here you can by raising the supply voltage, if you want to, you can raise the swing limit. So, you do not have that freedom at all. So, obviously, this is one of the differences between the two circuits or any two circuits you can figure out. Okay. So, now you can also try and see if there is something you can do to this circuit to make V d g coefficient not equal to 0. Okay. <coughs> 